Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Rangers Women Supporters Group podcast. I'm joined tonight by Car. How are you doing, Car? Yeah, after some technical difficulties and my internet deciding that it doesn't want to work anymore and sorting it out, we're finally on and ready to go. So yeah, I'm good. Yeah, long awaited return from international football this week. Are we excited to get back? I was. It was. Kickoff time was a bit annoying for me because I met to finish it too, but thankfully I got done a bit early, so made it just in time for a kickoff. But it's just good to be back, isn't it? Although the international break was welcome, so I think we needed a bit of a break from the performances prior to it. I, I think as much as international breaks tend to frustrate us, I think it, this one was a very, very well welcomed break. It surely was, so nice to be back, back to the real football. Real football indeed, but straight into the game, or uh, obviously when the visitors today, we started a change of shape, or uh, a bit of a guessing game when we saw the lineup. but it turns out it was a 4-4-2, uh, Jenna Fife in goals, back four, Jodie McCleary, Laura Rafferty, Tess Maytag and Nick Dock, Camille Lefay, Kirsten McLean, Love McLaughlin and Charlie Devlin in the mid- midfield with Katie and Rio up front. What did you think when you saw the team, Carl? I'm <laughs> confused, to be honest. It's, we've been crying out for a back four, and then we finally get one, and it's Tess and Jodie that's included in the back line. And not, well, you assume it'd be, obviously, Kathy's not in the squads, but you'd assume it'd be Kathy and uh, Raph and beside Nick and Leah. So a bit of a weird choice, but what, it didn't go too badly. And then Camille and beside Liv and and then Charlie was an interesting one, but Joe's always throwing new things at us and trying different things, and we complained that we've not had a back four and that we've not been doing certain things, so she's maybe been listening, I doubt that, but she did what we wanted, so we can't really be too mad about it. No, and one thing we're always wanting is a quick start to games, so I think that's exactly what we got. We did indeed. Uh, We, any getting her first goal of the season. Fair enough, she was out injured for a bit, but what a goal it was. Charlie Devlin, who was excellent today, we'll come on to that. Down the left-hand side, I think the ball kind of went to Camille and then Eni just almost ran it and just absolutely smashed it into the back of the net. Couldn't ask for a better start. She looked buzzing. We were all buzzing. Such a, a quick, snappy goal. Exactly what you want. Definitely, and it was great to see Kirsty scoring, you know, she looked quite down after the Hibs game, you know, so it was great to see her start the game so well. Yeah, I mean, it's always good when Kirsty McLean's doing Kirsty McLean things, which she did today, she was spinning around for Britain on that, that pitch, but to get an early goal, and, and such a good goal, might I add, but she does want be better later on, but we'll come on to that. It's just fantastic to see exactly what you want your midfield midfielders, if I could talk, to do. We're missing Chelsea in the midfield, so Kirsty McLean back stepping up and back back to doing what Kirsty McLean does is exactly what you want. With Charlotte Devlin on the score sheet next, and right from the start of the game, playing just just off the sort of left hand side, you know, Charlie looked absolutely up for it today, and it was only a matter of time before she scored. Yeah, I mean, what we've really been crying out for, isn't it? We we know there's a player there, we've seen flashes of it, but she really just showed up today. I don't know what she did in the international break that has changed it. Maybe her and Joe had one-to-one sessions and got her practising a lot of things, but she did absolutely everything borderline perfect today. I mean, it's a really good goal. Rio kind of feeds it to Charlie who just curls it into the, like, the far corner, whatever corner it is, one of the corners of the goal. And gets off the mark exactly what you want. We've known that she there's been a bit of a player there physically. She's very good technically. She's quite gifted. So it's nice that she got off, you know, up and running, opened her account, so to speak, today. As much as there should never be any sort of doubt against a, a team like Montrose, well, due respect, 23 minutes in, we, we've made it 3-0 and, and, and made sure the team can relax. And there's real hardy on, on the score sheet this time. Yeah, I mean, we kind of at them. We had a lot of chances in between the goals. There's like a fair few minutes between a couple of these goals that we were just creating a lot of chances. We were doing all the right things and we, you know, 
everything that you probably want to do, quick passing, getting down the flanks, maybe not as wide as we normally do with the formation we were playing with today. But I mean, this goal, is, Jody sets it up, who was excellent today, might I add. She, she had a really good game today. Um, it's a shot across, I don't know what it is, but the keeper initially saves it and reels where you want her to be and just pounces on. I guess the keeper kind of spills it a little bit exactly where you want her to be and just smash it into the back of the net. That's what you want from your strikers. You want them to be alive and paying attention to what's going on and not giving up on balls when it looks like the keeper saved them. And that's what she's done, exactly what you want her to do. I think that was a feature of the game today, you know, where we kept the ball alive and we, we kept the tempo up. And particularly in the box, we, we just kept the ball alive and and, and fought to, to get the goals from even scrappy situations. And it was Katie Wilkinson next up to do that. I mean, who else? Although recently, not so much, but it, is it a free kick or a corner, Alan? Remind me, because I can't remember if it was a free kick or a corner this came from. I think it was a free kick, if memory serves me right, but I'm sure somebody so. me if I'm wrong. I've got a free kick written down, so I'll stick with my instincts. It was a free kick. Charlie Devlin involved yet again, sends a free kick in. Katie Wilkinson heads it in at the back post or wherever, middle of the box, wherever she was, heads it in exactly what you want. But can I say Charlie Devlin today, her free kick, well, she had a couple of free kicks in her corners, were well executed. The players around her just weren't doing what we wanted them to do to get on the end of it. But it's nice that we've got another person to take, I guess, free kicks and corners because Tess normally is the one that would be taking those. So it's a bit different. It's always good to have options in the play. And it was Char Charlie again involved, you know, in the 41st minute when, you know, she was brought down and gave the ref a very easy decision to point to the spot. I mean, no mistake about it. She's absolutely brought down by, you know, one or two of their, their players. And I don't know, it kind of hesitates a little bit and then points to the spot immediately. And a few of their players are raging about it. I don't really understand if that's the other side you're absolutely screaming for. It's a penalty all day. And Rio's back on the penalties, which is nice because she was the penalty taker of last year. So, or last season, I should say. So steps up, puts it to, I think it's the left-hand side of the keeper, makes no mistake. Back in it, exactly what you want gets us, keeps us going because I think we could have slowed down. We very easily could have just settled and been. We're well up here. We'll just relax a little bit, but they kept it up for the full first half. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was the biggest question: who was going to take the penalty after Katie took the last one? And Rio did seem a wee bit miffed that she she hadn't taken it, but having missed the one before, you know, it was interesting to see it's Rio back on the penalties, who's normally so so good at them. Yeah, I think it probably will alternate between them. Just depends who's on the pitch at the time. But I think it probably should be Rio, just because, you know, she was always so consistent with them last season. She's pretty good at it, but Wilco probably would score just as many. So I don't think it really matters. You know, it's six and two threes, it doesn't really matter that much. Five five goal, five goals in, sorry, you know, and we saved the best to last to make it number six for the first half. I mean, I was talking about how good Eddie's first goal is. This one is spectacular. I want to see this back. If they don't upload the highlights tonight, can they just upload that goal? Because it's so good. She's, what, 25-ish yards out from goal? And just, I want to say smashes it, but she doesn't. She perfectly hits it, and it loops over, hits the underside of the crossbar and into the back of the net. I know there's a, a few out there that love a goal off the post and in or on the underside of the crossbar and in, but this is spectacular. And exactly why you take shots from distance, because it works. And we did it a lot this game, which made me very happy, which I'm sure people appreciate that. I love a, a, a shot from distance. But th this is what happens sometimes when you do that. You catch them out, and that's just such a stunning goal. She'll be absolutely buzzing to get her first goal of the season, but to get her second one in such a fashion is just unreal from Percy McLean. Definitely. So 6 now at half time, and then we come out in the second half with two changes right off the bat. Laura Raffer and Camille Fay went off, and we brought on Mia McCauley and Leah Eddy. Are you expecting a change of shape when we made those subs? Probably not at the back so much, but Mia just assumed it automatically to go out wide 
but then it kind of begs the question who would go on the other wing if that's the way we were going to split it so I, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen to be honest I think it was a bit harsh taking Camille off but she had an excellent game she always does she's very te technically gifted but then it begs the question why was Lee Eddie not on from the start if she was able to play say 45 minutes and have her in the back line like an actual back four instead of Tess and Jodie but that's a question for Joe. I, you probably didn't ask her that, but it's something I'd, I would like answered, but probably won't get answered. But uh, no, I, I wasn't really thinking about change of shape, to be honest. We're pretty fluid a lot of the time, so probably just moved in and out. So after being 6 0 at half time, you'd always expect the pace of the game to slow a little, yeah. but I, th I thought we kept up a pretty good tempo. And in the 53rd minute, it was. Charlie again popping up with our second goal in the game. Yeah, it took us a few minutes to kind of settle back into it. I think the changes kind of did that. And then just with it being, you know, after half time, it takes us a little bit. But yeah, Charlie, you know, happy, probably buzzing to get a first goal for the club, steps up. And Wilco, I think, does excellently here to keep the ball alive on the right hand side of the pitch. Just perfectly passed to, to Charlie, who. I think it was her left foot. That's what Rangers have said, it's her left foot, but that's your kind of ballpark is the, the stat guy and puts it into the, the far left corner, exactly what you want. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up on stats like that when I get to see the highlights, but that's the benefit of doing the pod the night of the game. But we bit a faux pas at the back just, just after this. You know, Jen, Jen has been excellent recently, but she'll not want to see this goal again. No, I think she gets a little bit unlucky. It's, I don't know, a shot or a cross, but she gets it initially and then kind of fumbles it. And it almost looks like she's going to put it in the back of the net herself. Manages to kind of get back to it. And then one of their players lays it off for someone else who just absolutely rifles it into the back of the net. Not ideal, not what you want, but just shows that we're not completely without fault at the back. Sometimes that these things can happen and need to kind of pay attention and keep your eye on it. Because at times they were getting in behind us and if not for some better shooting, they probably would have had a few more goals than they did get. Yeah, I, I, I don't know where maybe she's been a wee bit unsighted, you know, and seen it at the last minute. But it did look like she, she was gathering it up and then, you know, unfortunate there. But... It was quite a lot in the game, you know, we, we saw three more subs, Kirsty Howitt came on for Real Hardy, Jane Ross came on for Kate Wilkins and then Lizzie Arnott came on for Love, who got a very rare but very well deserved rest in the 64th minute. Yeah, I mean, we were just running back the clock, weren't we, to the title winning season. I think it was you that said that, bringing Kirsty Howitt, Jane Ross and Liz Lizzie Arnott back onto the pitch. It really is just, you know, dream team, I suppose, at one point, but we've got other players now that, you know, ha have better or different attributes. But so good to see Jane back. Good that Lizzie's healed from whatever her knock or whatever it was that kept her out for the last couple of games was. And always good when Jane comes on the pitch. Definitely. And it was a wee while later, but it was Jane that was next on the score sheet. And... Just good to see Jane Ross scoring goals again. It is, and it was quite a good team goal. When you think about it, Lizzie does really well to cross the ball in. Leah's there, Leah Eddie's there challenging the goalkeeper, and it kind of just falls perfectly to Jane, who's never really going to miss from there, and just puts it in the back of the net. And I think you can see a bit of relief come over her when, when she did get that goal, because I think she's been trying. Obviously, she came back from injury, scored against... Motherwell, and then has been out a wee bit with other kind of knocks and stuff and just kind of bench you to other players that we've got. So always good when Jane comes back on and scores and I think that'll get her up and running again and she's going to get some more game time that she's always going to, she's always got guaranteed to give you a few goals. Definitely. Um, just after that, you know, we've missed out a, a chance to Charlie Devlin had the bar with a free kick from about 30 yards, you know, tremendous effort, you know, and, and you wondered if maybe that was her chance of the hat trick gone, but just after Jane hits the back in it, Charlie finally gets her hat trick. Yeah, I mean, she can hit them with power, can't she? She's quite talented that way, and it's kind of unlucky that she didn't get more with the amount of chances that hit the bar, hit the post, and went slightly wide from her, but I'm assuming she's not going to be too mad when she's 
got her hat trick. You know, she scored her first goal for the club and now she's scoring her hat trick. Um, it's a ball across her box. I can't really remember who played the ball across, to be honest. Charlie's unmarked. There's no one around her. And, you know, it's not going to be difficult for her to just fire it into the top corner from that kind of distance. Exactly what you want. And, you know, I think she's kind of shut us up. We've been kind of critical of her. I'd say in the last few weeks, some of her performances weren't up to what we expected of her. And she's, you know, scored three goals in that game, done absolutely excellently, a couple of assists, kind of ran the show in large parts of the game. So she shut us up, hasn't she? Yeah, definitely. And, and Joe touched on it post-match, you know, the, but she said when Charlie came in, you know, she'd need a wee bit of time, but once once she get really up to speed and flying, you'd you'd really see a player who'd add value. And you know, we, we, we have been quite quite harsh on Charlie when the team's been struggling lately. So, you know, it's only right we, we absolutely praise her to to the help. You know, she she was excellent today and thoroughly deserved a uh, player of the match. But the score wasn't finished, is is Jane made it ten. Well, we wanted more. It took them a little while and then we eventually got there. We started scoring again. And I think at that point, once the the wee numbers come up on the screen when it goes to double digits, you're pretty happy. Um, I don't know. It's a ball in from either any or Charlie. I think it's any. Rangers have said it's any, so we'll go with that. Um, Jane kind of, I don't know. It said left foot. I, don't, I actually don't remember this goal, to be honest. I know that she absolutely smashed it into the top corner. Other than that, I don't really remember what happened round about it. But as you say, the, there's not much benefits of recording straight after the match when you can't see highlights. Yeah, I think it was a sort of finish that, you know, Jane managed to finish that on the back of the, the lifting confidence from school just a little bit before that. You know, perhaps she could have snatched at it had she not scored earlier, but the the scoring was finished not by Jane but by Georgia Carter from Intros. What happened? <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know. They had a free kick, which I thought initially she would sent straight into the top corner, but according to Sky, somebody got a head on it and has put it into the top corner that way. But I mean, if we scored that, I would have been buzzing because it was a beautiful, well worked set piece. So fair play to them for you know the last minute of the game trying that and. It, getting it to come off. Yeah, I think it was one of the engineers came quite a bit out to try and claim it. You know, just a decision. She, she was never going to win the ball. You know, she was tra- trying to be be aggressive and commanding, but I, I think I was just a, a stretch too far to, to make that and the head, head her on and, and then finished be, behind her. So, you know, a bit disappointing. We shipped a couple of goals, but, you know, coming back for international break and scoring 10, you know, when the goals had looked as if they were threatening to dry up, you know, overall, a good day at the office, Cam? Yeah, I think more importantly than the goals, because, you know, not to discredit Montrose, but it's Montrose, it's a team that we regularly score a lot of goals against. The performance for me was what was much improved over the last few weeks, well, you know, before the international break, the games. We were struggling to string passes together. It was sloppy. It was slow. Whereas today we're much quicker, much more decision, and we were putting the ball. Everybody, you know, was working really well together. I mean, at one point, Charlie Devlin tried to mid-air back heel a ball into the net, and it nearly came off. So they're playing with a bit more freedom. So I don't know if going away with their respective countries or having that break to just relax and then have you know, a bit of training with Joe and Jay has helped them with that. Maybe they've been told just relax a bit, just go and play football the way that you can. And I think it has helped. I mean, Nick was so far up at a point today that she nearly scored, whereas she seems to be a bit more reserved before that. So I think being away with Scotland, which she played like that with Scotland as well, she was getting really far up the pitch, you know, nearly had an assist for a Sam Kerr goal, was playing with a lot of freedom. I think that has helped them just relax a little bit. And I think it's Play Montreux is probably the perfect game to just kind of get the goals going again. Everybody settled down a bit. We're back into it and it'll help them massively with their confidence. Definitely. I, I would say the Knicks probably found a bit more freedom playing playing as a fullback and not one of the back three. You know, Knicks certainly enjoyed their game and probably one of our best games of the season. But 
I, I think here yeah, probably right. The biggest takeaway is probably performance. You know, it had so much of what we're we're calling out for. You know, a, a, a chance at a back four, playing playing much 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 quicker. You know, taking shots from outside the box and actually scoring goals. So ve- very happy with with this afternoon's work. But I clearly had Charlie Devlin as player of the match. Would you agree, Car? Was anybody else a standout for you? I mean, obviously, Jane scored a couple of goals. Rio was quite good. But I think it's got to be Charlie. She was involved in pretty much everything today. She was she was just excellent. Exactly what I wanted from her. You know, maybe she can not cut a million holes into the back of her socks <laughs> to help the, the kit woman there. That's a bit bizarre to me, but... She was just absolutely excellent today. Everywhere, scored three goals, assisted a couple, nearly had a, a flying back heel into the back of the net. Just everything that I wanted from a player that comes to play for Rangers. So hopefully that's her settled down now. But yeah, for me, it's got to be Charlie as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the, the vote will be up, up on this Twitter page already. So if you want to get involved in, you know, choose the player of match, you know, it's all for 24 hours and just head along to the... RFC WSG Twitter page, but on the score predictor, nobody had Kirsten McLean, his first goal score, but Ian Perham did high score this week with 22 points, four correct results and two correct scores, so well done to Ian, and even Greg has managed to climb above 16th place with an impressive 20 points this week, so well done to Greg as well. Yeah, well done to everybody that got involved. I don't think anybody had us down as conceding two goals, so that's certainly probably uh, hindered a few people's scores this week. But yeah, always good, and especially for Greg getting up up the table there. Another winner was Ralph Murphy, you know, who who won our our draw in the group for our Black Rooster voucher. So you know, it was it was good that we got to see Ralph at the game you know, and give him his, his voucher. Yeah, I mean, it's the benefit of being part of the group, isn't it, that we're always running. We kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say sweepstakes because they're not, but we competitions and things, you can get involved in them, win some stuff, and just so happened that was a, a Black Rooster voucher that he won, so I'm sure maybe on the way, on the way home he got himself some some dinner. Just nice to see sort of people get involved in the sort of community, but you know, and, and that's where it sort of makes the atmosphere at Broadwood so so welcoming for so many. Yeah, it's the whole point of it, isn't it? You meet like minded people, we all have the same thing in common that we support Rangers and especially Rangers women. You're always talking to different folk at the game, people always turn around, speak to you, and come across and say hi. And you sometimes we don't even know who you are, so maybe if you do that introduce yourselves a little bit first so we actually know who we're talking to but it's just great to speak to people and have that one thing in common that's the whole point of it so it's always nice when you can get something out of it get a wee voucher or win a wee prize of some kind it's always good yeah we saw so young eva watches the podcast we are mum celebrating her ninth birthday walking about with a big badge so happy birthday young young eva yeah well, Always nice when you see the kids out with their birthday stuff on because I know the players always like to mention it. It's good. But anything else you, you, you thought to bring up? No, I mean, all the players did well with their respective countries. Scotland did quite well for a change. That was nice and refreshing. And most of our players got to play apart from Cathy. So if we could all join the free Cathy movement, that'd be great. So she could actually go away and get some minutes for Scotland, that'd be good. And of course, Liv making her debut for England under 23 was good too. And obviously our under 23s and under 19s and what have you all did pretty well as well. So it was a good international break for everyone. But just going back to the game, you know, I did actually get some chats with Joe and with Charlie. So before we go, we'll just have a wee listen to that. Yeah, that's what something that we've been working on. You know, we've we've asked for it because it's not like we can't we can't produce it at times. We needed to make sure that it was something that was a real focus for us. Um 
and we're making sure that we needed to bring it from our training sessions into games and I think we could see that that was a real positive for us today. Um, the, the dictation of tempo and rhythm in the game definitely came from us, so it, really, it was really pleasing to see. That's the second time we've seen Jodie play at right back today. How do you feel she's doing in that role? Yeah, she's doing great. Um, you know, there's, there's definite parts of the game which helps us in there. Uh, she's got she's got a really good football break. That's something that, you know, deciding when to go and join in attacks, when to dictate possession as well from, from the back line is really important for us. So, you know, she's, she's a special little player that can play in many different positions and it's just trying to fit her into... To, what suits us at that moment in time because sometimes that can be a hindrance for you for playing but under me she'll she'll play a lot more because she can play in different positions definitely no is, is that sort of saying that this is a real child we're definitely we're about to see now <laughs> you know she was excellent today yeah i did say that when when she came in you know i think it'll take her a while to to get into it um and she's been excellent over the two weeks that, that the players have been away she's had a very good training a couple of weeks so i think I wanted to see that in her performance today and you've seen that she's hit the bar on the post as well. So she could have gone away with five goals today. So, you know, she had a, she had a really good performance and I, I want to see that definitely continuing moving forward. We seem to see a lot more mistakes from outside the box today. Is that something you've been working on? And yeah. Like players to do more? Just, just mixing up our game. I think it's important that, you know, we, we're not one dimensional. We can score from numerous positions and numerous players. And I think you saw that today with a, with the midfielders that we're getting on the score sheet. Um, it's really important that we don't become predictable and we, we've got another level to our game. I think we showed that today and it's, it's really important for us moving forward in this league. And you know, if we want to push and challenge and win titles and win trophies, we've got to go to another level and I think that's what we need to do. Last one. Uh, two subs at half-time, just to freshen the team up, yeah. no injuries? No, no injuries. It was just a, you know, it, it's a healthy scoreline at half-time. It was just a, you know, freshen it up a little bit Protect a few people and, and share out those minutes along the way. Brilliant. Well done again. Thank you. Cheers, mate. So it was good to see, or good to hear, sorry, Joe talk, talk so highly at uh, uh, Jody, particularly, and just talking about keeping the, the team sort of mixed up a wee bit and a, a bit of variety in play, you know, thing, things that we've been wanting to see a lot more of. I mean, it's music to our ears, isn't it? Because that's exactly what we've been crying out for. Make these changes, make all the subs that you can, freshen up the team, give everyone game time, take shots from outside the box, switch it up a bit. And then the first she came back, she's done it all. So maybe she secretly does watch this and has, has been paying attention to what we want. But making Jodie a right back seems to be something that she's been working on. That seems to be something they want to implement, maybe. Potentially that's... Where her future lies, we'll just have Jodie at right back in the future. It's certainly interesting to me. I prefer her further forward, but maybe it just keeps her happy with game time and means that she can play in the team, I suppose. Yeah, it's a wee bit far away from my prediction of Jodie ending up at centre forward, to be honest. But, <laughs> you know, what, what, what do I know? But I did also get to speak to Charlie briefly just, just after that. So, Here's a, a few words from player of the match, Charlie Devlin. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, apparently that didn't work, but uh, Charlie Charlie was 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 saying that you know she she sort of felt really good going into the game this morning. You know she she felt she could go and get goals, and you know she actually expected to get there and grab a hat trick. You know she's she's very sort of happy with how she's settling in. You know she she enjoyed getting a, a good bit of work in. The training was really good over at the national break. You know she she was quite happy with you know the the, the mix of people are there. And I think. Training was a wee bit different due to how many players were away, but I think Charlie especially has, has benefited from from that break and the extra works. So she, she's hoping that she can sort of kick on from here, you know, and I just real, really enjoyed being, being out there and getting in amongst the goals and, and being sort of so much part of the action. Yeah, I think it's, it's 
I'll, I'll work on why that didn't actually recall very well. But no, it, it was, it, as always, you know, it's, it's something we greatly appreciate the club's given us access to do. You know, it's, you know, Laura works wonders to, to get that, you know, and, you know, the, the, the club are gracious enough to accommodate that. So, you know, it's, it's something that I'll always great, greatly uh, appreciate. But I think that's pretty much everything ca covered. I think so. I think so. Can I just say that if Charlie feels that confident going into every game, that would be great. If she can just keep that up, that would be fantastic. And then we'd be absolutely flying because if that's her feeling confident and knowing that she's going to go and get a hat trick and she does it, and she's missing Meg, so she can just keep that up, that'd be fantastic. And maybe she could spread some of that confidence and positivity around the team to everyone involved. But of course, we appreciate the club for letting us do that. Well, you, because I, I don't do it, but it's you. And uh, Laura works her magic all over the place to make sure that we've got access to these things. So it's greatly appreciated. Yeah, and if Nick is watching and makes it this far on a podcast, I'm always humble. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Car. You know, and hopefully Laura will be back in her usual spot ne next week. No problem. Thank you, Al. Next week, we should actually mention his mother will on Saturday night in the cup. So at seven forty-five kickoff, the, the club have managed to have that move so it doesn't clash with, with the men's game and give people an opportunity to get to the games and not miss either game. So. Again, I, I know we mentioned it last time in the pod, but, you know, brilliant from the club to accommodate as many fans as they can. Yeah, it's good when everyone works together harmoniously. I mean, I don't know if that's a word we can use for Rangers Football Club at the moment, but work <laughs> together to make sure that if people want to go and sit through both games that they have the, the ability to do so. So K-Park under the lights, probably freezing because it's always freezing. It'll, it'll be a good game. Yeah, I definitely recommend anybody heading down to wrap up warm. Or I believe it's pay to gate as it always is at a park. If there is any sort of change in that, we'll put it on the group socials as soon as we can. But thanks again, Car, and we'll we'll see you all soon. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Al.